My name is Megan O'Keefe. I'm Sundip Parikh. And we are here to talk to you all about how we deal with problems in Istio when things inevitably go wrong. <laughs> uh, we're super excited today to mostly do demos in this session. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, just to queue up Sandip's demos, is um, give a bit of background about why Istio can be difficult and um, what we're really here today to talk about. This slide may be familiar to a lot of you. Uh, when you move from a sort of monolithic application into microservices, um, a lot of challenges can arise. Um, when you start decoupling your code into maybe different languages and frameworks and different services, it can be tough to keep track of everything, things like service discovery. All of a sudden, you have lots of network calls that you may not have had before. This can cause congestion in the network. Reliability, so you, with, inevitably, with the complexity of microservices, there's more things to keep track of, and things inevitably go down. Security, you now have more points of entry into the application. Um, instead of one firewall rule, you might have many. Um, and finally, aggregating metrics and logs. So uh, you need kind of a, a way to, to sort of bring all of the information about your services together, ideally into something like a single pane of glass. And while Kubernetes addresses some of the scaling and um, life cycling challenges of microservices and is an incredibly powerful piece of technology, uh, it doesn't solve all those problems. Right, so with the goal, the goal of Istio is to help unify microservices and the way that you manage them through an additional set of platform. Uh, to give a review of what Istio provides and some of the things we'll be diving into today, um, it's a somewhat complex architecture in which there are multiple control plane components uh, managing a set of Envoy proxies. So at the bottom there, we have the control plane consists of Pilot, Mixer, Galley, Citadel, which handle, uh, let's see, uh, traffic management, telemetry policy, uh, config ingestion, and uh, certs and keys, respectively. Uh, we, we will go into the, some of the specifics today. Um, and then up there at the top, we have the Envoy proxies. These comprise the data plane. These are the things that we are uh, configuring via the Istio control plane. And what does Istio get you? It helps address some of this complexity challenge, right? Unified traffic management, centralized policy checks, telemetry ingestion, custom adapters for the logs and metrics system of your choice, and automated service identity, so that with Istio you can turn on mutual TLS, end-to-end -end service encryption with a single policy. But, uh, if, raise your hand if you have tried to bring Istio into production at your organization. Yeah, keep your hand up if it has been a challenge. Yeah, Istio is a still a somewhat new piece of technology. It's gone through some changes, released 1.1 a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and there are some challenges when adopting Istio, especially on top of Kubernetes. And the first is that with those multiple control plane components that I showed in that diagram, there's just a lot going on. All of the pieces kind of fit together um, and generate a lot of logs. The APIs that Istio exposes are broad and complex and highly configurable. There are many, many ways to configure a virtual service in Istio, and this can get challenging when something goes wrong because you're like, is this even a valid virtual service, for instance? Uh, there's a lot of paths to a failing state, and we're here today to demo some of those paths. Yeah, so the other thing we want to stress is that we're, as developer relations for Google, we really want to know how folks are using Istio and where are the gaps in the tooling and in the ecosystem so that we can help try to address that at Google and out in the broader community. So um, we did want to mention that. You'll see us using things like curl throughout this demo, and if you've used Istio, you may also just be kind of stuck in this loop of just repeatedly curling when things go wrong, and we acknowledge that as well. So without further ado, we're going to go into three hands-on demos today. Uh, my colleague here is going to handle the first couple, addressing traffic management and telemetry, and I will be picking up again in a little while to cover authentication. Take it away. Cool. Thanks, Megan. So we're going to start around traffic management. So how do you debug Istio traffic routing? So as a quick recap, the way Pilot works, right? you take your virtual service rules, your gateway rules, uh, or policies, you push them up to the control plane, Pilot makes sure those rules get pushed out to all the Envoy proxies. 
And there's, there are mechanisms built in to figure out, are my Envoy proxies in sync with the pilot rules that were sent to the cluster, and what are those differences? And we can see and examine the configuration on both sides of that. So the traffic API, uh, and this is just a small subset of it, we couldn't really go through all of it here, but just as, again, a quick recap, there's this idea of sort of north-south, right, inbound and outbound traffic into and out of your, your service mesh, and then there's east-west traffic, which is in and out traffic within the service mesh itself. So north and south are gateway and service entry, respectively, and then within a cluster, or within a service mesh, I should say, uh, the east-west is virtual service and destination rule. So those are the objects that we use to configure things like traffic splitting, traffic steering, or ingress or egress. So the demo app we're going to use today is, uh, well, actually, how many of you have used book info from the Istio samples repo there? That's almost everybody. Uh, perfect. Well, we wanted to create another little version of it, so I made something called weather info that we're going to use here. Um, it's a simple front end with two back ends, um, nothing terribly complicated, but it lets us comb through the logs a little bit easier because it's a smaller application. And so this is what the UI looks like. It just shows you the weather either in, uh, with V1, it shows you the weather in a single city, and in V2, it shows you the weather in multiple cities. Right? That's all this thing does. It's got an outbound API call to a weather API service, so we've got that service entry as well for that. So the problem that we're having with this deployment, though, is that we pushed this, this code up, we pushed our virtual service rules, everything is, is out there in the service mesh, but what we're seeing is 50-50 splits of traffic not the 90-10 we've specified. And for those of you that are familiar with, with doing this in Kubernetes, when you deploy things by default, you get this kind of 50-50 round-robin routing. Right? You're not getting any kind of particular split unless you've got different ratios of pods out there. In our case, we've got one of each, one of V2 and one of V1, but we're still seeing 50-50. We're not seeing, again, that 90-10 split. So the way this was deployed, and I just wanted to do this instead of showing you guys more YAML at the moment, but the way it's deployed is I've configured ingress gateway with a gateway policy and a virtual service to direct inbound traffic to the weather front end. Weather front end then has a destination rule and a virtual service that splits the traffic 90-10. And then we've got one service entry for that weather API call. So with that, can we switch to uh, this laptop demo? Oh, good. Can you guys read that okay? Yeah? All right. So let's just take a quick look at what's deployed on this cluster. Oops. So this, was a, this is a GKE cluster with the Istio add-on uh, set to permissive mode deployed out there. Um, and I can show you the pods that are in there as well. So that's the first place we're going to look. We're going to look at the pods we've got running. So right, weather front end is working fine, and so are the, weather, the two weather back end versions as well. Um, let's check the services and make sure those are actually set up correctly as well. So we can see the weather backend service is also configured correctly. And then we can actually dig into the objects that we pushed up earlier. So I can say kubectl get virtual service, and there's a virtual service for weather backend. And that's the one that directs traffic from the front end to that 90-10 split. So we can actually look at that in depth. And so this dumps out a little bit extra output, but here we can see that the host that we're trying to identify here, weather backend, and we've got a destination and route here with 90% and 10% down here. So again, this should be working, but if we take a look at the UI, and I'll just hit refresh a couple times here. I pulled this up a little bit earlier. It's roughly showing us about a 50-50 split, right? Again, we should be seeing a lot more of the single version, which is just a single city in this case. So let me flip back, and the next thing I'm going to do, uh, again, when you're in this sort of troubleshooting mode, you have a lot of steps to choose from, and I try to do it in sort of an orderly fashion, but, you know, Megan and I were talking about this earlier. It's sort of a cyclical process, right? You end up kind of going back through again and again, but the steps I sort of like to take here are the first things are, one, just checking the basics. Did my pods and services get up there correctly? Are all the Istio policies I pushed running correctly, like virtual service, destination rule, et cetera? So those are all in there, and those, are, those look fine. So we've got to dig a level deeper. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do here is make sure that within the cluster itself, we're not seeing the routing. Right? Maybe the problem is weather front end. Maybe if I try another service that's inside the cluster and inside the service mesh, we might see different behavior. So if you remember, there was a pod there earlier called Respy. Um, that's a little utility that Megan wrote just to check response, you know, uh, compare response types. 
So I'm quickly going to execute a command inside that container. And I've got it here somewhere. Yeah. Oops. Never type live. All right, so what this is going to do, it's going to issue a thousand quick, requ quick requests to the weather backend service on a little endpoint that we created called version, just to compare response types. And again, even within the, the service mesh, inside the cluster itself, we're still seeing 50-50. So the problem is somewhere else in the stack. Um, so one of the things we'll, I'd like to do next is check the, uh, check the Envoy proxy from the outbound side. So in this case, we can look at the weather front end Envoy proxy log and see if anything shows up in there. First thing I'll do is grab the front end pod. Oops. All right, so we're going to use that front end a whole bunch later on here. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, get the logs from the Envoy proxy from that from that pod. Metadata. Oh, thanks. See, this is why you should never do it live. All right, so that's a lot of log detail, but we can actually start to dig in here and see what's going on, and. We see a whole bunch of inbound calls. So we're actually looking for outbound. So I'm going to quickly grep here for outbound because it's a little bit easier to read. So we can see outbound calls from weather front end to weather back end. And something that you'll start to get used to looking at and, and understanding when you look at the Envoy logs is this, this whole line here where it's saying, I'm trying to make an outbound call on port 5000 to weather back end. But you'll notice. There's a little extra gap there between those two, those, two, uh, those two pipes. Well, what that's telling us is it's not directing the traffic to a particular version, right? It's just sending it, the traffic out to weather backend. And again, we're falling back to Kubernetes round robin routing. It's not using the Istio service mesh routing that we set up. So now it starts to get a little bit more interesting. This is where you're going to start digging into the Istio control proxy uh, configuration commands. So, Istio control is a binary that we ship with the Istio release itself. And so that actually has a ton of useful debugging commands. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit here. Um, but it's, it's a great, powerful tool to really dig into how the proxy is configured and how things are set up. So here we're actually going to use things like proxy status and proxy config to dig into where the problem is and try to understand it a little bit better. So the first thing I'm going to do is check the proxy status. And so we can see that for all of our proxies, and the ones we care about are in the default namespace, so weather backend, multiple single, and front end. And those are all synced, right? All those rules are current and synced, and they're getting them from this particular pilot pod. And we can actually check a, we can check the weather front end one in, uh, specifically. You always have to specify the pod name and the namespace. Oops. And so here, what we'll see, again, the cluster configurations match, the listeners match, and the routes match. So what that's telling us is that, again, the Envoy proxy knows everything that Pilot knows. So the rules we push to Pilot, they have made their way over to, to the Envoy proxy running in weather front end. But we still haven't figured out what the problem is. So how do we, again, continue to dig further? And that's where the proxy config command comes in. So proxy config on front end will show us a little bit more detail. And we hear there's a couple of subcommands here. So you want to check the first, the cluster configuration on the front end pod. And what this will tell us is all of the, uh, the sort of outbound components that it can send things to or inbound, inbound services that it can send information to. So again, we see here we've got weather backend with no version information. And it knows that it can send things to multiple and single. But the question is, why is it not happening? So it looks like, again, the configurations have made their way across. Well, let's check one more component, which is the outbound routes from that Envoy proxy, because that could be another issue. So again, Istio control, proxy config. Oops. 
on the front end pod, and oops, we're going to look at the routes. So these routes are just based on port name. And so we see that there are a bunch of series of routes just for individual different services running inside the service mesh. In particular, our weather backend is running on port 5000. So let's take a look at that one in depth here. All right, so we can see that one specifically, and it's only got one virtual host. So that right there tells us there might be a problem, right? Because we actually have two hosts there. We've got weather backend running in the v1 and the v2 configuration. So we should have more than, than one virtual host outbound. Um, so let's take a look at that one. And actually, you can output that as JSON. Now, I'm going to do this the first time just so you can see the output, because it's lengthy. This is a lot to go through. It's a lot to kind of scroll up and, and, and try to read through. So often what I will do in these scenarios is actually filter this using a tool called JQ, which just helps you parse through JSON. And I'm actually going to filter it down to a particular set of things I need to look at. Hopefully that works. All right. So it's showing us all of the outbound services it knows about on port 5000. And here's the problem. Right? There is actually no route for this Envoy proxy to send traffic to weather backend. It only knows about sending traffic back to itself because this service, the front end service, is also running on port 5000. Well, so what's the problem? Right? How do we figure out from here? Again, we know the rules have made it all the way across, but there's actually no entry in the route table for that proxy to send traffic to weather backend. Well, as it turns out, there are two things you need to do to make sure your services become part of the service mesh. The first one is obviously adding the sidecar proxy, right? So you deploy your pod, you get the, or you get the sidecar injected automatically into your pod, and that makes it part of the mesh. But there's actually another sort of esoteric requirement that you have to worry about as well, which is in your service definition, right? So remember, I've got weather backend, it's got two versions. So in my deployment, I had two deployments, weather backend single, weather backend multiple, and I have one Kubernetes service fronting them. In that service definition, you have to use a very specific naming convention for your port, right? If you just use backend, it doesn't work. If you use, you know, come up with a name, it doesn't work. You actually have to specify two parts, the protocol type, so in our case, HTTP, and then any kind of optional identifier. And so we can actually take a look at the service real quickly. And we can see that that is the problem itself. Right, so here in my service definition, that's the issue, right? If that requirement is not met, that pod doesn't get picked up inside the mesh. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna copy and paste this really quickly from my notes. So let's go ahead and apply that updated service. And so you can see here what I did was, all I'm changing is that one little port at the bottom, I changed the name to HTTP dash backend. So I'm going to go ahead and commit that. And in a couple of seconds, you could actually tail through some of the Envoy logs and see new things start to pop up and happen. But we can actually just go right back to Istio Control and check that same command earlier where we checked all the outbound routes and we filtered them down by name and domain. And now we see that weather backend is a specific available outbound route. And if we actually look at that JQ output fully, and again, I apologize, I'm going to have to scroll a little bit here uh, just to show you all this, all this really, really compelling stuff. There's actually two entries in this configuration. There's an entry for multiple, which is one of the versions, and there's an entry for single. That means now it knows that on port 5000, there's two routes. There's one for front end, there's one for back end, and inside that 5000 route for back end, there are actually multiple entries and multiple subsets it can direct traffic to. Now I'm going to go and rerun my recipe command. And just to see if we get a difference in version output here after 1,000 requests. It's pretty close. Uh, well, looks like there was one little error along the way there. Um, but we got about a 90-10 split between our services. So that right there, we were able to, again, figure this out. Now, what I would say is the solution to this problem 
turns out is relatively trivial. And if you dig through the documentation, this requirement is really well laid out, or at least it's reasonably well laid out, in that you have to use the correct naming convention. But the purpose of this demo is really to show the Istio control binary, that mechanism, is a great debugging tool. You still need to have some other things in your toolbox, like curl, um, or even, again, JQ or grep to filter through the output, because it is quite lengthy. But Istio control gives you a lot of visibility into the different levels and the different states of configuration between, again, the control plane and the data plane. So we could switch back to the slides for a second. All right, I had a backup video there just in case. So that was the traffic version. So for the next demo, what I want to do is take a quick walkthrough on debugging telemetry. And so, again, just a quick recap on the way Mixer works, right? Those Envoy proxy, that Istio proxy that sits there inside of your inside of your pod right next to your container is sending telemetry and metrics information to Mixer, which is a control plane component. Mixer then forwards that information onto the back end of your choice. Um, in this case, it could be Prometheus, Stackdriver, Datadog, you name it. The problem is that the Mixer configuration is hilariously complicated. There's a lot of stuff. So again, our issue here is that we've got custom metrics that aren't showing up in Prometheus. How do we figure out what that problem is, or how do we fix that problem? So let me just jump over here, back to the demo, please. And I'm going to switch to my other cluster. And this has got a similar uh, deployment setup already. The only difference is I have a little load generator script that's running just to generate some load. So the first thing I want to do is uh, take a quick look at Prometheus running inside this cluster. Oops. All right. So here's the Prometheus entry, and I have these metrics in there that just automatically dump out the temperature um, of, my, of the cities when it, when it finds them. So I can actually start to look through here and look, and I'm not seeing any of my metrics. So right, we know that there's, that's the problem there. But the quick thing we can do is check the service discovery component and see, can we find our pods in here? And if you look, we've got 0 to 99 active targets up there. That means Prometheus is not picking up any metrics from our pods. Right? It's getting the metrics out of the Istio proxy, but nothing in particular from my applications or my services. So we know that something's missing on our end. Because if we actually open this up and dig around, I'm just going to show this relatively quickly. All right, so I think that's probably somewhat challenging to read. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So here's the weather backend. Whoops. Here's the weather backend rule, and we can see that it's getting dropped. Right? It's not picking anything up because I'm not publishing anything. And that's the solution in this case is I'm actually not telling Prometheus how to scrape the metrics out of, my, out of my container, out of my service container itself. So the easiest way to do that is to add some annotations. And I've actually got a canned version of this here that I can show you very quickly. Um, and so here's the bit I need to add. Right down there. Inside each of my deployments, I need to make sure I specify a particular set of annotations so that Prometheus will scrape the metrics and then include them with the rest of the Istio metrics that it's automatically pulling in by default. So I can quickly apply this new configuration. And then what will happen at a matter of a few seconds or minutes or so is that it will start to see those metrics come in. Um, we can actually take one more quick look at Prometheus and see if that's working now. So I'm going to refresh this page. And what you'll see is inside of this, this target, Istio Secure, it's actually got two new services that it's picking up, which are the two that I just annotated. And if we go back to the graph, we can actually start looking for city temperatures. That's the custom metric I'm outputting. We can execute a graph there. So it's only got one so far, but it's starting to pick it up now. The other components of Mixer, though, right, there's a lot of other individual kind of configuration there that you might need to look at. 
So one of the ways you can do that is using kubectl commands. And if you actually pull all of the API resources and grep with just istio.io, you can see there's quite a bit of custom resource definitions that we supply, or that Istio supplies. So digging through this by default, or by, you know, just as a kind of a debugging step is a little bit challenging. So there's a great set of docs on the Istio IO page that I want to mention called, there's inside the FA, inside help FAQ, there's a great page called missing metrics. And what it does is it literally walks you through every possible sort of debug step of Mixer. Um, now the challenge is that a lot of these Mixer components are very tightly coupled. So if there is a broken configuration somewhere where maybe a rule is not there, or maybe some of the metrics aren't there, or maybe it's not sending information correctly, one of the easiest steps to kind of get things back up and running is to just reapply the Mixer configuration and fill in any gaps that may have occurred. So if we could switch back to the slides, I'm going to show a quick example of what that looks like. So what you end up doing for Mixer debugging is confirming report calls, right? And that's where you connect to one of the Istio telemetry pods and take a look at its UI. You can actually curl against the current metrics it's sending out to Prometheus. And it actually has a bunch of diagnostics in there. So you can check those calls. And you can also look at just individual configuration problems or handlers or logs themselves. For the handlers, it just depends on what your outbound mixer config looks like. If you're configured for Stackdriver, you want to see Stackdriver handlers and adapters. If you have uh, Prometheus and Grafana, you want to see Prometheus rules in there. If you're looking at some of the metrics, you want to make sure that the metrics for like, you know, request count, TCP request size, bytes, etc., those are in there. But again, if something is missing, it's very hard to pick out one component and reapply it. So one of the things I often end up doing is pulling down the latest release of Istio, in this case, I use the Helm chart. I generate the Helm chart for the full install with Mixer on and Mixer off. I take the diff of those two, and then I take that little bit that's left over. Well, not little. It's still relatively long. And then I push that config back up to the cluster. So I'm basically filling in anything that might have been missing. Any missing metrics definitions, any missing rules, that kind of configuration kick will, will solve that problem. It's not a great solution at the moment, but for kind of a, a, a weird set of issues, that might be your best bet. Um, now, I think if there are individual like metric handler things missing, you might be able to, again, extract the little parts of the configuration. But because there's so many CRDs and it's very tightly coupled, it's hard to pick and choose. Sometimes it's easier just to reapply and make sure it's filling in whatever's missing. With that, I'm going to hand it off back to Megan to talk about security. Thanks. Awesome. All right. So I know it's kind of uh, a whole bunch of demos, and uh, I'm here to do one last one all about authentication. So I kind of had to choose one security demo to do. So Istio supports both authentication and authorization. So Istio supports um, end user authentication with J JWT tokens, as well as service to service authentication, MTLS, as well as Kubernetes are back. So I had to kind of choose one, and I chose MTLS authentication. How does it work? I'm going to give a quick recap before I dive into the demo about what we should expect to be seeing when we turn on MTLS, mutual TLS authentication, for one service. The first thing that happens in the data plane is a TLS handshake, so an exchanging of certs and keys from service A to service B. Then service A does um, a secure naming check. And what this means is that Istio has a mechanism to ensure that um, a client-side service can make sure that the server-side service is authorized to be running it. And what this actually means is a comparison of the service account against the actual pod that's running, um, making sure it's the real service B. And finally, there is a TLS connection that is established. What is the actual Istio architecture that makes this happen? So there's two control plane components involved in Istio MTLS. The first is Citadel. Citadel is responsible for generating the certs and keys for each of the um, sidecar enabled services. And what Citadel will do is generate a cert key pair for um, the service account in Kubernetes. So in my case today, it's just the default service account. And then when you um, enable sidecar injection, as I have today for my entire default namespace on my GKE cluster, when a new pod is spawned in GKE, um, Kubernetes will mount that cert key pair that Citadel created as a secret. 
or sorry, it's a secret in Kubernetes and Kubernetes mounts it into the pod. So whether or not you've enabled MTLS, the cert key pair is there. What this means is that when you, the user, decide that you want to enforce strict MTLS for a service, a namespace, or the entire mesh, uh, you can do so and uh, it happens very quickly. So you, what you would do as the user is create a policy, an Istio policy API object, add it to the Kubernetes API server through kubectl, and uh, pilot in turn is watching the Kubernetes API server and creates an Envoy filter and pushes that down. So it's a multi-step process, um, and we're here today to talk about when this thing does not go right. So in this demo, I will be using the same sample app, uh, Weather Info, and I want to enforce MTLS for only the weather backend. Um, so this is the YAML that you would apply to make this work. Um, it's an Istio policy object, and you can see there at the bottom it says peers MTLS. And I know the syntax is a bit weird. Um, it was designed to uh, grow in case we support more things later. So it's just MTLS open bracket. So in this demo, I will be sh uh, showing the following things. So for simplicity purposes, I only have one version of the backend that I'm sending traffic to, the multiple version. And uh, what I want to see is turning on MTLS for the backend and seeing a nice uh, 200 happen between front end and back end. But what I'm seeing instead is a 503. So let's walk through that demo. So if we can switch to my terminal, please. I know we've had some, some glitchy issues that are sort of Black Mirror-esque on the screen here, and I apologize for that. But uh, all right, so here I am in my terminal. I'm not as brave. I'm not going to be typing out every single command. So bear with me as I go into VS Code and copy paste some commands here. All right, so like in the previous demos, I'm in a cluster with the weather info app deployed. I already have Istio installed on this cluster, but I do not have any MTLS policies enabled. So if I run kubectl get policies, I can see there's nothing there quite yet. You can see here in two out of two, what that means is that there's two containers per pod. I have turned on Istio sidecar injection for my default namespace. So if I try to go to my weather front end now, I can refresh the page. This is the ingr Istio ingress gateway uh, external IP through which I've exposed the front end. And uh, only multiple showing up, uh, just to clarify exactly why that is, I literally went into Sandeep's virtual service and I'm sending every, all traffic to the multiple version. So if we go into the Istio documentation on authentication, if you've ever been to this page, it's a bit long, but has a ton of useful information. What it says here, if we scroll down to authentication policies, that if you want to enable client-side authentication rules with mutual TLS, you need both a policy and a destination rule. And just straight off the bat, that can be tricky, right? You're like, oh, I just need like a policy, just like enable MTLS. But what this actually means is that if you have a destination rule, you might need to actually change it to enforce MTLS. And the reason for this, so if I go into the policy I'm about to enforce, the reason you need two resources is because the policy is what tells the weather backend to receive TLS traffic, but the destination rule is what tells the clients of the weather backend to use TLS. So mutual means both, right? Um, so what we're going to do is apply these resources to the cluster and hope for the best. And I know yesterday I used a lot of shell aliases, so I'm not going to do that today. MTLS backend one is the file that I'm about to apply. And you can see here that we created that policy and that destination rule for weather backend. So what I hope to see here, if I keep refreshing the page, is that what we might start to see are some 503 errors. And it can take us a couple of seconds to start to propagate down. Um, but what we will eventually see within five or 10 seconds is that all the connections between the weather front end and the weather back end are 503-ing. And if you use uh, Istio, raise your hand if you've seen this upstream connect error. Yes, this is the sort of classic envoy, ah, something's wrong error. Um, and this is what the back end is reporting and we're displaying it on the front end. Okay, how do we figure out what's going wrong? So I have a couple of things I like to do. Um, 
it's somewhat personal in the way you want to kind of look at logs and try to parse everything. What I like to do in, in this case where I only have kind of two services going on is to just look at the logs. Um, so here on the left, I'm showing the weather front end logs. Here on the right, I'm showing the weather back end logs. The actual tool I'm using here is called Stern. It's an open source Kubernetes logging tool that's super helpful in that you can use regular expressions to exclude certain types of logs. And yet you can also select based on deployment. So you don't actually need the, the pod name, which can be annoying to copy paste. So what I can see here is, um, is a whole bunch of output on the weather backend side. Um, but if I do a bunch of like page refreshes, what I want to be seeing is, um, is a report that we did a successful request, and I'm not seeing that. So it's just a whole bunch of, bunch of, uh, of other sort of uh, cleanup and, and mixer logs. So that's not super helpful. Um, I'll keep that open in case I need it later. Uh, so what I want to see next, if we think back at that kind of architecture for MTLS and how to enable it, there are two Istio control plane components we need to check in on. The first is pilot, the second is mixer. With pilot, what we want to make sure is that pilot is taking our configuration and pushing it down to the data plane. So what I will do here, and sorry again for this kind of spammy logs, is that uh, there is, there are policies that, that Pilot is picking up and sending down. And you'll notice here in this log, pilot conflict outbound listener TCP 443, which is the TLS port, proxy weather backend single. OK, but right now we kind of only care about weather backend multiple. And this can be kind of tough to sort of, uh, sort of grep, but we can see, OK, here's multiple. This might seem OK. I, I worry about pilot conflict outbound listener. That seems bad, uh, but I'm not totally sure like, what it means. So at this point, I can either sort of panic or kind of think about the other components, right? So there's Citadel too. It's like, OK, maybe there's something going wrong with Citadel. Maybe the certs and keys are not there, and maybe it's a, like a really quick fix. So what I will next do is make sure that Citadel is healthy. Citadel is running. That's good. Um, but does that mean that the keys and certs are there? So what I will typically do is this long command, and I'm copy pasting it because it's a bit long. But wh what this is doing is it's execing into each of our front end and back end pods respectively and checking the validity of those certs and keys. Um, so I'm going to do that. So the front end, we can see that we have a valid cert that it is the valid times are valid. <laughs> and uh, we can do the same for the back end. All right, so my hypothesis that maybe something was weird with the certs and keys is kind of not true. That part seems to be OK. So now what? You might be wondering uh, what, would, like, what else would Envoy uh, be able to report back to us that would be helpful. And what I'm about to do might sound crazy, but I'm actually going to increase the, the log level in Envoy to debug. Um, from default info to see if Envoy can say anything more about why requests to the back end are failing. So in order to do that, um, Envoy, so when you have an Envoy container, it actually exposes an admin console. It's actually a UI. I'm not going to show it today, but there's some helpful stuff in there. Um, and you can um, send requests to that admin console to, to do things with that very specific Envoy proxy. So what I'm going to show here is um, calling that admin console to enable trace level logs for only the back end. So you can see here, across all of Envoy's loggers, I've just upped the log level to trace. And so what we hopefully will start to see here is if I you know, refresh this page a whole bunch more, which is uh, yeah, interesting. Um, there's a whole bunch of logs that are coming in. You can see it's now like debug level. And it's like, OK, how do I even parse this? Um, and uh, there are a lot of ways to do it. Just for purposes of this demo, I'm going to do a grep because I ran this demo before and I know what I'm looking for. Uh, it, and uh, to do a grep on the word handshake. So if something went wrong with the exchanging of certs and keys during that initial TLS handshake error, whoops, I have to export that pod, don't I? Uh, we, sh we might see be seeing uh, a TLS handshake error. 
So uh, you'll notice that in the last couple of seconds, uh, we got a whole bunch of these debug logs from Envoy that are saying external Envoy SSL handshake error one. So what this would tell me if I enable them TLS is that, that the very first step of that TLS connection happening, that very first step failed. And I know I have valid certs and keys from the Envoy proxies, so I know that can't be it. So typically at this point, I start to blame myself. Um, <laughs> what did I do wrong on the config side to make this horribleness happen? So what I will do is go into all of the resources that I added and try to rack my brain. Oh gosh, what went wrong? So remember, at the very beginning, to make all of this break, we added a policy one and a destination rule two. What is responsible for this, uh, uh, for each of these components? Uh, so policy is for the server side, destination rule for the client side. I will now use the Istio CTL tool to try to figure out if there is a conflict going on in my configuration. So Sandeep showed the Istio CTL command for traffic routing. I'm going to show um, the same command line tool, but just a different command which is authentication TLS check. And what this does is compares the destination rule and the policy for one service um, to see if there is a conflict. And let me get this a little bit better. So what we see here for weather backend, so I called this, this command for just the weather backend. What we see here is status conflict, server MTLS, client HTTP. That's not what MTLS is, right? What we hope to see is server MTLS, client MTLS. So what's happening here? What this tells me is that if we, if we go back to these resources, destination rule is what tells clients of the weather backend to use TLS. This is the problem. This is where I am at this point. I'm like, okay, there's something up with my destination rule. What do I do? So at this point, what I will do is run kubectl get destination rule and see, oh gosh, no, I have two destination rules for the same service. This is not good in Istio. You do not want overlapping destination rules that say different things. So what I'll do at this point is see what's actually going on there. So I'm getting those two destination rules and I'm just gonna show the whole YAML output. So we see both of the destination rules here. This is the one I added, right? So DR weather backend is the one I added just a few moments ago. And this one is good. Enforce Istio mutual, this is what I expect to see. I scroll down, I see the second destination rule that was added by somebody, probably me, an hour ago, that said actually traffic policy TLS mode disable. So at this point, Envoy is very confused in that it thinks it needs to be doing TLS and not TLS at the same time, 503. Um, that's kind of an oversimplification of like what's actually happening under the hood, but what, what we would do to fix this is we would delete the destination rule that we added before, destination rule, it's a long word to type. And we would um, modify the, the destination rule we already had, surprise, it was in here. <laughs> this one, oops, lost it. That said TLS mode disable, we would modify that to enable MTLS on it. So I have a file that does exactly that. It's here. I'm going to apply it to my cluster. And what we hope to see, crossing fingers, is that we can get back to the back end. So this doesn't show every single piece of the debugging MTLS, but I hope it kind of sheds some light about like how not to enter a complete and total state of panic when things go wrong on that end. So if we can go back to the slides, please. Thank you. That was just the backup video. All right. So let's wrap up a little bit. What did we learn in this talk? Uh, we only had a certain amount of time, so we did kind of have to pick and choose the demos that we, that we did. Um, but what things that we looked at is like how to determine if a virtual service is actually working, how to use Istio CTL and the Envoy logs to, and, and other tools um, to really dig into what's happening. Um, Sandeep cho showed us how to diagnose missing, missing metrics in Prometheus. Um, and finally, I, I just showed um, transport level authentication. Here is a short and uh, honestly abridged list of some of the stuff we, we used in this, in this talk. This is not every single tool that you can use to diagnose Istio. We know that the tools ecosystem is lacking and we are talking about it and it is something that we are extremely aware of. Um, in a perfect world, 
I never use curl to diagnose when Istio is going wrong. We need something a little bit more scalable, right? If the promise of Istio is automation and being able to manage hundreds or thousands of microservices, we need something better than curl. So I'm super uh, excited for like the coming months and years and the growing ecosystem that is Istio. This is not the end. If you are still here for the rest of the day, there are multiple other Istio talks, um, including VM mesh expansion, CICD stuff with Istio, as well as a, a discussion of Traffic Director, if that's of interest to you. A quick call out that we are conducting user studies in the coming months for Istio. If you would like to join these user studies, you can grab that QR code or go to that link. Um, our UX team would love your feedback and your participation. Thank you so much.